Pharma Ventures, experts in deals and alliances. Hello and welcome to Pharma Ventures Insights here at On Helix 2017 in Cambridge. Microsoft are a company that everybody is familiar with and their products and services interact with us and us with them all day long, every day. Um, but one thing maybe people aren't so familiar with is they do an awful lot of other things and are involved in fundamental research in biology which hopefully will impact positively on healthcare and drugs for the future. Joining me on the show today is Sarah Jane Dunn of Microsoft. Sarah, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So what is Microsoft doing in, in, in fundamental biological research? Yeah, it's, it's, it's not what people expect. There's a lot of research going into artificial intelligence and machine learning, you know, systems and networking, um, a human experience in design, all the kinds of things that you might expect Microsoft to be to be concerned with. But a number of years ago, they um, they wanted to engage in in science and they wanted to to know what you know what they should be doing in biology. And the group that I'm part of, uh, we call ourselves the um, Biological Computation Group. And the motivation behind our research is that you know what's coming down the line is the ability to program biology and I, I, some people that can seem like a very natural thing to say some people find that a bit of an odd thing to say but it's founded on the idea really that biology itself computes so cells all they're doing all the time is just processing information um, and so that's what we're calling this biological computation mm -hmm. and kind of because of that really we should be able to harness that in order to program biological behavior and you know you can kind of I always make this analogy that you know back when someone was first programming on silicon they had no idea of the kinds of companies and technologies that have emerged from just that ability to write you know software that runs on that material and I feel that now we're on the cusp of not being able to predict the kinds of technologies and industries that could emerge from being able to program cells you know things that could transform medicine things that could transform energy and you know how we grow food and things like that so um, that's kind of why Microsoft's interested in this space and it's, it's got a group of researchers, not just in Cambridge I should say as well, there's a core group of us there, there's also researchers in Redmond in kind of Microsoft's home base, uh, also in, uh, in Boston and, and, and uh, I'm not quite sure if there's anyone doing biology in New York, but anyway, as, just to make the point, you know, we're, we're, it's quite an effort across, across all of Microsoft. So how do, where, where do you get your, your data from? I mean, are you, are you mining data that's already out there from existing sources and, and doing your comp computational wizardry on that? Or uh, I think it depends on the particular problem that the individual researcher or group of researchers are working on. Hmm. Um, I work quite closely with um, university uh, experimentalists at the University of Cambridge. Um, so we're typically working with data that they've generated. Um, you know, where it's uh, useful and necessary, we can also take advantage of data from, from the literature. Um, so kind of either through direct collaboration or, or where needed when it's, when it's made publicly available. And, and how do you choose what, what, what to work on? There's plenty of problems out there to solve. Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, plenty yeah. of cancers, heart yeah. disease. Yeah. What, what, do you, what do you do? What do you pick? Well, we tried to think about the kinds of different like almost levels of biology that might you might need to study to figure out how to program biology you know mm -hmm. so there's a strong um, effort in our group towards understanding how to program at the level of DNA you know and the level of genetic devices and then you know where I tend to sit is more at the level of programming cells and so we kind of thought hard about the problem and tried to identify key things that we could that we could work on and so in, in what I do you know something like stem cell biology was quite a natural mm -hmm. uh, fit because you know stem cells and development it's kind of a canonical example of you know the fact that cells have to make decisions take in information and output a decision which could be you know to divide to differentiate that kind of thing so c could you give us an example of something you've you've taken data and figured out and said this is so okay well now we understand how cells do that process so we collaborated with um, uh, the stem cell Institute at the University of Cambridge we're really lucky to, to have such amazing collaborators so Austin Smith um, his lab uh, based there and more recently as well, one of his postdocs who's just set up his lab in the University of, of Padova. And what we set out initially to try to understand was, you know, why is it that an embryonic stem cell can either, you know, if, if given the right conditions, will stay as an embryonic stem cell or begin to differentiate? Can we develop techniques to understand the kind of network of interactions that really control that decision-making machinery? 
And so we developed techniques that actually borrowed from techniques that are more familiar to kind of uh, computational science researchers, well, computer science researchers in Microsoft um, from what's known as software verification. And the idea was to treat this kind of interaction network of, of genes that are kind of making, you know, helping the cell to decide what's stated in um, as, a, as like a program. And that in the same way that we write specifications for a software program, that we would try to take observations of experimental behavior, you know, uh, gene expression data, for example, and kind of turn those into specifications of a biological program and then borrow the software verification techniques and adapt them to, um, to be able to synthesize programs consistent with those specifications. So we initially applied those techniques to study the problem of pluripotency itself um, and more recently have been looking into the problem of reprogramming. Um, so I don't know if you're familiar with that term Mm -hmm. well, yeah, a little bit. Uh, so it's, you know, about 10 years ago, uh, Shinya Yamanaka showed that you could reprogram somatic cells into mm -hmm. the naive embryonic stem, stem cell state, um, but really horribly inefficient, no one really knows how it works. And so we then applied those techniques to derive the program that kind of governs that transition, which we're also able to interrogate. And what we've been able to do is predict how to kind of shorten the time it takes to reprogram and improve the, re the efficiency by, you know, a factor of like 400 and, and, you know, really kind of um, almost, I would say, try to do predictive biology. So right. use the understanding right. we've developed to try to inform us of how we can improve, you know, for example, that type of transition. So are you very much dependent upon whatever's done at the, the, the wet biology chemistry end of things to deliver the data that you can do your, your work on and if the wrong things are being measured there or not all of the variables are being measured there, mm. you'll either get a fuzzy answer or the wrong answer? Yeah. So actually the answer is yes and no. Mm -hmm. So we develop techniques that allow us to kind of bake in some of the uncertainty that we can have from data. You know, so uh, if you imagine the process of, you know, you're trying to figure out, you know, how a set of, of set of genes might interact with each other and you go from your data and you say, okay, it looks like when this one goes up, this one goes up and when this one goes down, that one goes down and you kind of maybe sketch out a model. I think gene A activates gene B and I think gene mm -hmm. B inhibits gene C. Um, but you know, the, at that kind of level, you're making quite strong assumptions really. You're boiling it down to like this, this one network. And so one of the things that we did very early on was try to, try to take a step back from that and allow you to say, oh, I'm not sure, it could be that gene A activates gene B, it could be that gene C inhibits gene D. So at that level, we are, we're allowing people to, um, to test a, a whole set of possible models because you're, you, you want to bake in some uncertainty mm -hmm. at that point. Um, we are very dependent um, on the kind of, uh, accuracy feels like the wrong word, but you know, on good experimental data when it comes to constraining some of those models. Imagine you've got a big set of models and right. being able to eliminate some or, or others. And I think, you know, that's the point where you're saying, I need a model that can do X. You better be pretty sure that X is what that model should do, right? And so that's when, yeah, we are. We're very careful about what we put into, uh, into our analysis. Um, but that's where I'm really lucky to work with such good mm -hmm. experimentalists. And, uh, you know, we're, we're all very careful to be skeptical of our own results and we think through this kind of thing hard and um, but yeah that that level of it yes um, um, what's the end game what's the, what's the ultimate deliverable that that, that the, the, the work that you're doing can bring an influence on, on healthcare? I think you know my group specifically is you know we're interested in developing a, the the understanding but also the tools that the community can use to, um, to work with biology and program biology. So, you know, the, all of the, the work that we're doing in these different areas, we can combine into a platform that could be made available, you know, that can do all of the amazing things like run on the cloud and, and, and you know, take advantage of Microsoft's infrastructures in that way. Um, but that, you know, our research can then be handed over to the community to, to make sense of, of these systems and that we'll have developed the kind of computational uh, tools and the computational understanding to make sense of these, of these things that we're trying to understand as a, as a community. Well, we'll look forward to seeing Microsoft have a greater influence on, on uh, developments in healthcare going forward. Yeah, hopefully. Sarah Jane, thank you very much for joining us today. Yeah, pleasure. Thank you. For more information about Pharma Ventures, visit our website.